So this course title deals with advanced SQL, advanced querying language for using on relational databases. Just what is a relational database? Commonly referred to as the Relational Database Management System, or RDBMS for short, is really effectively a term that refers to any databases that are built using a relational structure. But why do we need relational databases? And just what are they? A database is classed as a relational database if it effectively contains more than one table. And those tables have relationships. So not every table is related to every table, but each table is related to at least one other. That way, the tables within the system all become related. Now, when you have multiple tables that are related, some tables will be parent tables and some tables will be child tables. So their data will be dependent on another table, just as a child is dependent on a parent. And there will be lots, or maybe just a few, one-to-many relationships. So in this case, we see parents having many children, but you don't see many children having many parents. So that's really the theory behind relational databases. You have multiple tables, those tables are related. They could be related on a parent to child basis. They are nine times out of 10 related on a one to many basis. But why do we even need multiple tables? Well, let's take a working example. What's wrong with just having a single table, just using a big spreadsheet? Well, if we take the example here of children and their parents, since we've mentioned them, and we have a nice flat little table here, could be an Excel even, we have an ID for each person, a first name, a surname, the child's name, and the child's date of birth. Then what happens when somebody has a second child? We have to effectively restructure the database so that we can add in a second child column and a second child date of birth column. Not too bad yet. But then what happens when somebody has a third child? We then have to further restructure, adding in child three column and a child three date of birth column. Now you can see the problem here. Every time somebody breaks what effectively is the maximum number of children you can have, we have to restructure the database. And database restructuring is not really straightforward and shouldn't really be done once the system is in place. So how do we get away without having to do all that restructuring and at the same time, saving a lot of empty storage space? Here we have Mary Jones and Oliver Tony who don't have a second child and a third child. So their field entries remain empty which in itself is not a massive thing, it's a little bit of data, but the biggest thing is that if you're querying your database, you have to query that empty field, which is going to slow things down. So we're slowing things down and we're causing restructuring by trying to keep things in what effectively is a big flat table. So how we get around that is we don't have the children and the parents in the same table. We have the parents in one table and the children in another, where each of them have their own unique rows. The result is a table of parents, their ID, first name, surname, and any other related fields we want to keep about them, date of birth, address, etc. We also have a table which holds the children, but only the children that exist, not potentially a second child for Oliver or potentially a second child for Mary, just each of the children. So we have Mary, Sid, James, Jimmy and Harry, each with their date of birth, and more importantly, each with a parent reference so we know who that child belongs to. We have a link between the ID in the parent table, that is referred to as the primary key because it's unique to each parent, linking through to the parent column in our children's table, this is referred to as the foreign key because the primary key links to it. It can repeat multiple times because if people have more than one children, it's going to appear in that table more than one time. See how one appears three times, so Fred has three children. Now, if additional children come along, there is no data restructuring we simply add another row into the children's table. So the next child to be born will be given the unique ID of six. So their child ID will be six. Their parent ID would be whatever the ID of the parent is. Perhaps that's going to be Fred again. So it'd be one. And his fourth child gets entered. No data restructuring when more data arrives and no slowing down queries because I'm to look at empty fields. We only enter a row in the children's table when a child exists. So that's reason one for having these multiple tables in the first place. Now there is a second reason, as equally as valid as the first. Take our sample data again, but we've got a bit more information here. We've got the parent's date of birth and we've got the department that they belong to. Now this time, it's not an issue of restructuring that's the problem or of querying empty columns. 
Here we have a lot of repetition. The department column at the end, for example, has the word accounts three times. That is repetition of data. Now, we're only dealing with four records and three of them are repeated. But there could be 4,000, there could be 40,000, there could be 400,000 records, in which case that multiple of repetition becomes much bigger. So to save that repetition of data, we effectively extract the department into its own table as well. And we end up with a result where there's our parents table. We replace the department because we still need to know what department they're in with an ID. So they get replaced with a numerical number, which is much faster for querying than text values. The text values are then entered as unique values in their own table, in this case, the department table. And in there we see the accounts, warehouse and sales department, each of them given their own ID. That ID can then link through to where it gets used, which is in the department column of our parents table. So the word accounts, the word warehouse and the word sales only appears once in the whole database system. Wherever else we want to refer to somebody being in the accounts department or being in the warehouse department or being in the sales department, we use the unique ID reference, which makes querying the data much faster, which makes sorting the data much faster, which effectively speeds up the whole system. So that's reason number two for having relationships in a database, hence our relational database system. So the key terms we need to take on board here when dealing with databases is the word database itself, which refers to the whole structure, the tables and any other objects we add in to our database. The table itself, which is where all the data is stored. No data is stored anywhere else in a database except in tables. Within those tables, we have columns of information, fields of information. Those are the vertical entities and have a single name for the whole column. We have first name, we have date of birth, we have department. And then we have rows within each of the tables, referred to as records. So this is a record of information. So that's a horizontal row of data. We have primary keys and all of the tables should have a single primary key so that you can uniquely identify that record. Foreign keys in tables that are children of parent tables. And that is the link between the primary key and the children's table. We have joins between tables. They need to be defined so that the database knows what belongs to what. And then we have the term SQL itself, which stands for Standard or Structured Query Language. And that is the language that we will use to interrogate and to manipulate our data that is stored in our database.